you tell us uh, how did you start uh, supporting Anti Slavery International and, and why? I heard a, a story on the radio in one morning about a young girl my daughter's age being s stolen effectively from a village in India and it, I, it really moved me and I thought uh, I wanted to become involved in trying to fight that in some way. We realized that human trafficking and slavery in general is sadly an easy crime to commit across borders but there's little dialogue that's going on in to stop. It had not occurred to me until about 25 years ago that slavery was not somehow something which was rooted in history and had been dealt with in Victorian times. Well it goes right back to my sixth form days at school when we were asked to give a lecture on something that interested us and I did a very vast subject, the opening up of Africa, which of course had to involve the slave trade, about which I felt very angry and that anger came over. Unlike a number of organisations which have very small targets in terms of what they're fighting, anti-slavery seeks to deal with slavery in a very broad way, whether it be international or the different forms of slavery or the different types of things that can give a safe haven for slavery. And it also has the local expertise on the ground, which is so important, um, but it really is operating at a high level, influencing all the most important stakeholders to actually make change happen. Today's conference, I think it's really interesting. It's really interesting to talk to, to hear from people that are uh, experts in the field uh, and uh, the reasons why they're engaging and what they're doing in the field. It's a new format and it, to intersperse the, the sort of potentially a little bit dry business of an AGM with talks from some of the real movers and shakers in, in this area is a, is a really good way of doing it because you learn so much. And I think it raises a lot of questions about how we can be agents of change in a very difficult environment currently, what with the sort of changes we're seeing in the UK with Brexit. It's important to remind them that we, the British public, require that they look into the origin of goods and not merely sign agreements for short-term economic interest. And it seems a colossal job, almost impossible, will it ever stop. But you've got to work, and if you don't work for it, things will never change.